You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 17th of July. Opposition unites to chalk out strategy against PM Modi's BJP ahead of 2024 elections. U.S. working with India on platform to speed its energy transition, says Treasury Secretary. And Taliban asserts Pakistan should not blame its shortcomings on Afghanistan. And now for all the details. In an effort to put up a united front ahead of the 2024 general elections, leaders of major opposition parties in India gathered in Bengaluru city on Monday to take part in an opposition unity meeting convened by the Congress party. The meeting, which is being held after a month of the Patna plenary, will deliberate on seat sharing, coordination among the parties and a common program. The Congress party has termed the huddle a game changer for the Indian politics. Senior Congress leader K.C. Venukopal said the opposition parties are united by common purpose to protect democracy in the country. However, the BJP said it will be an opportunistic alliance. We are all united by a common purpose to protect democracy in this country, to ensure the constitutional rights, and the independent of our institutions. These all are under attack on the present regime of BJP government. They want to silence the opposition voice. Baal ke dube logon par Congress party khamosh ko vyastha par Bengal mein log tantra ki hatya ke upar mamta ki Tanashahi or Nirung Kushtapar, Congress Party or CPM CPI Khamosh, Tamil Nadu ke Spash Bhrsa Char par bhi Khamosh. Yehi of Sarbadi Kapandhan Milda, Bangalore me. Meanwhile, ruling BJP led NDA has also announced a meeting in capital New Delhi on Tuesday, inviting at least 19 like minded parties, including some new and old allies, to participate in the meeting. Although PM Modi remains popular and is widely expected to win a third term without much difficulty, the opposition parties are leaving no stones unturned as they believe a joint campaign and straight one on one constituency contest against the BJP can turn the tables. Well, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Monday met India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on the sidelines of a G20 meeting in India's Gandhinagar city and said that U.S. is working with the country to develop an investment platform to lower the cost of capital and increase private investments. Both the leaders discussed issues such as strengthening multilateral development banks and harnessing opportunities presented by crypto assets. Yellen said the two countries are also close to reaching an agreement on the global minimum tax system. It's also important to address the immediate need to boost the bank's concessional lending capacity for global challenges and support low-income countries to supplement ongoing efforts. An Indian partnership in this effort will be a key to its success. And the two-day G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting will witness sessions and major topics like global economy, sustainable finance, infrastructure and financial inclusion. It will review the outcomes of the G20 finance track and seek guidance from ministers and governors on the way forward. Moving on, the recent massive protest by teachers in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir witnessed widespread crackdown to muzzle any sort of dissent in the region. Apart from threats that they will be expelled, scores of teachers were arrested for demanding pay scale upgradation. To stop the long march to Muzaffarabad, prohibitory orders were also imposed, forcing them to ultimately end their protest. <laughs> इस तरह से जुल्म और सतम और इस तरह रास्ते बंद करना जिस तरह हम कोई यहां के लोग नहीं है यहां के वासी नहीं है यह साथ का इकराम हमारे माथे का जुमर है यह सोसाइटी का फेस है इनके लिए रास्ते खोले जाएं This is not the first time people in the occupied region have to often hit the streets to demand even their basic rights They claim anybody who dares to raise voice against discrimination is subjected to intimidation arrest and imprisonment 
And in response to remarks by Pakistan's Defense Minister Khwaja Asif on the Taliban for disregarding commitments in the 2020 Doha Agreement, Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid said that the deal had been signed with the U.S., not with Pakistan. In an interview with the BBC, Mujahid said that the Taliban authorities had conducted discussions with Pakistan regarding the Tehrike Taliban Pakistan and would take action against the group if the Pakistani government shares any evidence. Responding to Mujahid's remarks, Asif took to Twitter and said Pakistan has made a firm decision to root out terrorism from its soil whether or not Afghanistan cooperates. Pakistan has been witnessing a spate in terror attacks which they believe is perpetrated by the banned TTP. The militant group is not directly associated but pledges allegiance to the Afghan Taliban. And amid criticism, the Nepal government on Sunday presented a bill in the parliament that will allow withdrawal of sub cases, the Kathmandu Post reported on Monday. The bill to amend some existing acts endorses a provision that allows government to withdraw cases from all tiers of courts against any person belonging to a party or group involved in violence in past, but now carrying out activities peacefully. Opposition lawmakers have termed the move an attempt to undermine the judicial authority. Notably, several leaders of the ruling Mao Center have complaints registered against them in relation to violence during the insurgency era. At least four people reportedly lost their lives after a boat capsized in the Buriganga River near Bangladesh's capital Dhaka on Sunday night. Local media reports suggested the boat sank after it collided with a sand-laden bulkhead in the river. Most passengers were believed to have swum ashore as the water bus sank close to the bank. Rescue and search operations to find the missing passengers were still underway till the last reports came in. And the Hindu devotees across India offered prayers and took a holy dip in sacred rivers on the auspicious occasion of Sombati Amavasya. Take a look. Thousands of Hindu devotees thronged India's temple towns to offer prayers and take a holy dip in sacred rivers on the auspicious occasion of Somvati Amavasya or No Moon Monday. It is believed bathing in River Ganga and other sacred water bodies on the occasion dissolves lifetimes of sins. Devotees also pray for the happiness of their departed ancestors on the occasion. While married women perform different rituals and observe a fast for a happy married life and long life of their husbands. I am not sure that 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 I am Meanwhile, as the auspicious monsoon month of Shravan is also underway, hundreds of devotees offered prayers at temples dedicated to Lord Shiva, the god of destruction, to seek his blessings. According to the Hindu epic of Mahabharat, Bhishma, the son of River Ganga, narrated the significance of Somvati Amavasya to Yudhishthir, the eldest of the five Pandav brothers. He said that whoever takes a bath in the sacred rivers on this day would be prosperous and free from grief, sorrow and diseases. Today, the temple is very large. It started at 2 o'clock. The people are coming from the temple. And in the morning, they are doing the prayer. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow.